Hi everyone, in this class I will be explaining you what is jaundice, what are the different types of jaundice and why jaundice is caused. Let me start with what is jaundice. Jaundice is yellowish discoloration of sclera, mucous membrane and skin when there is increase in blood bilirubin levels. So when there is increase in blood bilirubin levels, this bilirubin gets deposited into the tissues. That is the reason the tissues gets yellow color. The first site for yellowish discoloration or the jaundice is the sclera. What do you mean by sclera? Sclera is the outer covering of the eyeball. The sclera is white in color normally and because of excess accumulation of bilirubin pigment which is yellow colored, the sclera turns yellow. In this picture, you can compare the color of the sclera. In normal individual, the color of sclera is white and whereas in jaundice, the sclera color is yellow. This is a picture to explain you the discoloration of sclera in jaundice. You look for sclera discoloration in upper part of the sclera. This is how examination for icterus or jaundice is done by looking into the upper part of the sclera by elevating the upper eyelid. Look for yellowish discoloration in the sclera. The second site for observation of jaundice is mucous membrane. Mucous membrane of the oral cavity and underneath the tongue. The third site is yellowish discoloration of skin. You can make out the changes of color in the skin. The normal values of bilirubin are 0 0.2 to 1.2 milligram per deciliter. So this is the normal blood bilirubin levels serum bilirubin levels. Usually the first site of jaundice is the sclera. To observe alloyish discoloration in the sclera, the serum bilirubin has to be exceeding more than 2.5 or 3 milligram per deciliter. So when the blood bilirubin levels increases above 3 milligram per deciliter, then only this bilirubin gets deposited in the tissues and the tissues will appear yellow in color. So that means there is a margin for this. So consider up to 1.2 is normal and only about 3 milligram percentage jaundice is seen. Only about this value the yellowish discoloration is observed. So that means the serum bilirubin levels between this range that is 1.2 to 3 milligram per deciliter there is increase in the serum bilirubin level, but clinically there is no observation of yellowish discoloration. So this we can call it as latent jaundice. There is no sign of yellowish discoloration in any of the body tissues, but blood levels of bilirubin will be more than that of normal in case of latent jaundice. That means jaundice is observed only when the serum bilirubin levels are more than 3 mg per deciliter. Now let me explain you what do you mean by hyperbilirubinemia. Hyperbilirubinemia is nothing but increase in blood bilirubin levels. I have already explained you what is the normal blood bilirubin level. The normal blood bilirubin level is between 0 0.2 to 1.2 milligram per deciliter and any values above this 1.2 milligram per deciliter is increased bilirubin levels and we call it as hyperbilirubinemia. So in jaundice, the blood bilirubin levels are in excess of 3 milligram per deciliter that is the reason 
the blood bilirubin levels will be in excess and they get deposited in the body tissues and the body tissues turn into yellow color. Now let me explain you what are the different causes of jaundice. Why bilirubin increases in the blood? So the bilirubin is the end product of hemoglobin metabolism. Breakdown of heme results in formation of bilirubin mainly in the splenic macrophages and that can also be happening in the liver and bone marrow macrophages also. So I am here with the splenic macrophages excess destruction of red blood cells giving rise to more and more bilirubin. So the first reason for increased bilirubin level in the blood is excessive breakdown of red blood cells and increased production of bilirubin. That can happen in case of hemolytic diseases. Hemolytic anemias can result in increased RBC breakdown and when there is increased RBC breakdown, more and more heme is liberated out and more heme is degraded to bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubin levels are increased when there is excessive destruction of red blood cells. Now the second reason is if there is impairment in the hepatic uptake of bilirubin, the bilirubin has reached the liver along with the albumin, binding to albumin. Now if the liver cell is not taking inside bilirubin, impairment in the hepatic uptake is the second reason for increase in the blood bilirubin level. So what happens if there is impairment in the hepatic uptake? This bilirubin level which has reached the liver sinusoid will not enter into the cell but will get accumulated in the liver sinusoid and from the liver sinusoids it can reach the hepatic veins and from the hepatic vein it can enter into the systemic circulation therefore the bilirubin levels in the blood increases if there is decreased hepatic uptake of bilirubin. The third reason is if at all the bilirubin has entered into the liver cell and the liver cells are not having adequate amount of enzyme for conjugation of this bilirubin. So bilirubin has to be detoxified within the liver cell by the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase. So if there is deficiency of this UDP glucuronyl transferase enzymes or absence of these enzymes, what happens? This unconjugated bilirubin is not getting conjugated into a water soluble conjugated bilirubin. So the third reason is deficiency of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase can result in increased unconjugated bilirubins. This unconjugated bilirubin which is not getting conjugated and which is uh, lipid soluble, water insoluble, it gets accumulated within the blood and that will result in unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Next, the fourth reason is some of the bilirubin that is conjugated, if at all, this will spill over into the venous sinusoids through the porters. There are transmembrane port proteins which are MRP3 transporters, multidrug resistance associated protein 3. So, this transporter will transport the conjugated bilirubin into the venous sinusoids, liver sinusoids. So, there is one more transporter working here. This has to take back, reuptake of the conjugated bilirubin from the blood. So, if at all this transporter is not working, if this transporter is not working, what happens? The bilirubin which has moved out, the bilirubin which has moved out will not be taken back into the liver. So, the bilirubin which has moved out here is the conjugated bilirubin. The conjugated bilirubin from the liver cell has reached the venous sinusoid and if this is not returning back to the hepatocyte, this will result in excess conjugated bilirubin in the blood. Conjugated hyperbilirubinemia can happen if this transporter is doing the work and this transporter which is taking back is not doing the work. So this transporter is the OATP1B1 or OATP1B3. So this is the organic anion transport polypeptides. So this transporter here, this has to be functioning 
in order to reuptake the conjugated bilirubin back into the liver cell. So, this is the fourth step. So, the fourth step is impairment in the hepatic reuptake of the conjugated bilirubin. This can happen in case of rotor syndrome. So, this is a hereditary disorder. In rotor syndrome, there is deficiency of these transporters OATP1, B1 subfamily, OATP1, B3 subfamily. This transporter deficiency will result in excess accumulation of conjugated bilirubin in the venous sinusoids and from there it will spill over into the systemic circulation and there is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in rotor syndrome. The next step is this conjugated bilirubin has to be excreted from the hepatocyte. So, here there is a transporter at the canalicular membrane. So, this transporter at the canalicular membrane has to excrete the conjugated bilirubin from the liver cell into the biliary canaliculi. If there is defect in this transporter, that can result in excess accumulation of conjugated bilirubin in the liver cell and this excess accumulated conjugated bilirubin in the liver, liver cell will spill over into the systemic circulation and result in conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So, this is the fifth reason for increase in blood bilirubin level, defect in this transporter. So, what is this transporter here? This is the multidrug resistance associated pro polypeptide protein 2. So, if there is decreased or deficiency of this transporter, the hepatic excretion of conjugated bilirubin is affected. So, this can be seen in case of Dubin-Johnson syndrome, Dubin-Johnson syndrome is a hereditary disorder where there is deficiency of these transporters, M MRP2 transporter deficiency. That is the reason the conjugated bilirubin from the liver cells will not be reaching into the biliary canaliculi and there will be excess accumulation of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. The next reason can be if at all there is obstruction in the flow, if at all obstruction in the flow within the biliary canaliculi that is inside the liver. So, these are some biliary canaliculi small biliary canaliculi inside the liver and if there is any obstruction to these, the conjugated bilirubin excretion is impaired. That can result in excess accumulation of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. This is the sixth reason. Sixth reason is obstruction to the bile outflow within the liver. Intrahepatic biliary obstruction can result in excess of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. The next reason is if there is any obstructions here in this bile ducts. So, these obstructions in the bile duct here can result in excess of conjugated bilirubin level in the blood. So, what happens in these seven reason seven? There is an obstruction for excretion of the bile. The bile gets accumulated in the biliary duct and this excess of bile accumulated in the biliary duct can cause damage to the biliary canaliculi and can get entry into the lymphatics and through the lymphatics it can enter the circulation and within the circulation this conjugated bilirubin level will be increased. So, these are the seven explanations for increased blood bilirubin levels. Now, let us quickly summarize what are the causes for increase in the blood bilirubin levels. One is increased formation of bilirubin by excessive breakdown of RBCs, two decreased hepatic uptake of bilirubin that is unconjugated bilirubin, three decreased conjugation within the liver cells because of deficiency of UDP glucuronyl transferase enzymes. Fourth is 
decreased hepatic reuptake of conjugated bilirubin because of defect in OATPs deficiency of OATPs fifth decreased or impairment in hepatic excretion of conjugated bilirubin because of defect with canalicular membrane side MRP2 transporters sixth obstruction within the biliary canalic line that is within the liver intrahepatic intrahepatic biliary obstructions seventh is obstructions in the bile ducts extrahepatic biliary obstructions now here in the first step if there is increased formation of unconjugated bilirubin in excess of liver taking up of this unconjugated bilirubin and converting it to conjugated bilirubin will result in what what type of hyperbilirubinemia whether it is unconjugated or conjugated hyperbilirubinemia here so here it is increased unconjugated bilirubin in the blood so here in second when there is a reduced uptake of unconjugated bilirubin so the here also there is increase in unconjugated bilirubin in the blood when there is decreased conjugation again there is increase in unconjugated bilirubin in the blood when there is decreased hepatic reuptake of conjugated bilirubin from here the conjugated bilirubin levels increases there is increased conjugated bilirubin and when there is decrease in hepatic excretion of conjugated bilirubin there is increased conjugated bilirubin and when there is obstructions both intra and extra hepatic will result in increased conjugated bilirubin in the blood so these three are the reasons for one two three are the reasons for increase in unconjugated bilirubins in the blood and from fourth to seventh are the reasons for increase in conjugated bilirubins in the blood now i will explain you what are the different types of jaundice so there are basically three types of jaundice one is hemolytic jaundice also called prehepatic jaundice so this is because of the reason one so that is when there is excessive breakdown of rbcs that is hemolysis excessive hemolysis of red blood cells will result in excess formation of bilirubin and you have unconjugated bilirubinemia excess of unconjugated bilirubin in the blood the next type of jaundice is hepatocellular jaundice hepatocellular or hepatic jaundice so the reason for this hepatocellular jaundice is the two reason two the reason three reason four reason five so all these two three four five explained here are the reasons for hepatocellular jaundice so that means there may be impairment in the hepatic uptake of the bilirubin impairment in the conjugation process impairment in the hepatic reuptake of conjugated bilirubin and impairment in the excretion of conjugated bilirubin from the hepatocytes so what what are the causes for this hepatocellular jaundice there's something to do with damage to the liver cells so it can be either viral hepatitis or drug induced hepatitis or autoimmune hepatitis or alcohol induced alcoholic hepatitis so all this can damage the liver cells the hepatocytes and the hepatocytes are not functioning in taking up the unconjugated bilirubin and conjugating it and excreting it so that can result in either increase in the unconjugated bilirubinemia or can it cause uh, because of failure in excretion if some bilirubin is conjugated and it is not excreted even the conjugated bilirubins are also in excess so it can be both increase in unconjugated as well as conjugated bilirubinemia so the reason 
2 and 3 will explain the unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and the reasons 4 and 5 will explain the conjugated bilirubins in the blood, higher conjugated bilirubins. The third type of jaundice is the post-hepatic jaundice or obstructive jaundice. Obstructive jaundice is also called cholestatic jaundice or post-hepatic. So, the explanation for obstructive jaundice is there is obstruction to the bile flow. It can be intrahepatic obstruction, the reason 6 or it can be extrahepatic obstruction, the reason 7 that will result in obstruction to the bile flow and there is congestion, excess accumulation of bile and the bilirubin levels within the biliary canal and that can spill over into the systemic circulation directly through the sinusoids or it can enter into the lymphatics. From the lymphatics, it can enter into the systemic circulation in case of obstructive jaundice. And what type of bilirubin is in excess in blood? Is it the conjugated or unconjugated? So the livers are normal here. The liver is functioning normally. Conjugation is happening normally. So this conjugated bilirubin is not excreted through the bile and this conjugated bilirubin will be in excess in the blood in case of obstructive jaundice. So this is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in obstructive jaundice. So these are the three types of jaundice, hemolytic jaundice, hepatocellular jaundice, obstructive jaundice. Hemolytic jaundice, there is excessive destruction of red blood cells. In hepatocellular jaundice, there is some problem with the liver cells, damaged liver cells. So it can be either because of drug induced, viral or alcoholic or autoimmune or many more examples for hepatocellular damage, liver cells damage. And the obstructive is it can be because of inflammation or strictures or some cancers blocking the biliary canal or even the stones, gallbladder stones can cause obstruction and many more examples. I hope you understood what is jaundice, where do you look for jaundice and what are the different causes of jaundice. In the next lecture, I will be explaining you the features of different types of jaundice and also the laboratory investigation findings of jaundice. Thanks for watching this video.